Hello, everyone. Dr. Victoria Skirbo here speaking to you from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center in Wareham, Massachusetts. It's time for taroscopes for the sign of Capricorn. That's Capricorn Sun, Capricorn Moon, Capricorn Rising for the month of May 2023. Uh, we start the month of May with uh, Pluto changing direction. It uh, stations uh, retrograde on the first of May Day. Powerful, powerful uh, Earth uh, centered holiday for the pagans. And uh, there are a lot of shifts this month. We don't just have Pluto changing direction. We have Mercury. Mercury is in Taurus all month, but it is starts the month retrograde and goes direct on the 14th. And so it does move uh, forward uh, through Taurus, but doesn't really get out of its shadow until June. And so things will loosen up after the middle of the month when it comes to communications. Um, but um, probably not completely clear up. And we're probably not going to exactly know what's going on until sometime in June with that Mercury retrograde. We also have Jupiter, the planet of expansion and understanding, changing signs. It's moving out of um, out of Aries, which has been... Um, Jupiter isn't too much of a struggle, really, but it does square your... Uh, your sign. And so with Jupiter there, there's these sort of leaps forward and wanting to move forward and 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 maybe overestimating because because Jupiter can do that, especially in Aries. Aries doesn't have a whole lot of experience. It's a new energy. It's new beginnings. Aries oftentimes don't realize there's a wall in front of them until they've ran smack into it. And so there's that there's been that energy with Jupiter and Aries. But now it's in Taurus and now it's trining uh, your earth. And especially if you have it at the beginning of the earth signs, uh, your Capricorn at the beginning of the earth signs, then there's a nice trine from Jupiter. Mars, the planet of action, is finally moves out of Cancer. It hasn't been that happy moving through the Zodiac. Um, probably the last time it was really happy uh, was when it was in Aries. Well, maybe not. It's been it's been a challenging ride for for Mars and Mars uh, spent a whole lot of time in Gemini. Finally moved into Cancer, which felt a little bit like a relief. But Mars doesn't like being in Cancer. Mars does, however, like being in Leo. And so Mars moves into Leo. As it moves into Leo, it opposes Pluto and squares Jupiter. We have a grand fixed square in the chart uh, with the nodes of the Moon that's getting all kinds of activated this month. So we're at a crossroads, we're at an evolutionary crossroads, and usually with fixed signs, something has to break, something has to go boom in order for us to uh, come to a new realization of uh, how we are meant to live and um, and what we are here to do. So a lot of awakenings this month, um, and uh, let's see your your sign, your your ruling planet now. Uh, Saturn is in Pisces, and so for you, it's it's a couple of things. It can become um, um, releasing any thoughts, ideas, uh, mental constructs that don't serve you uh, to let go of them. It can also be an opportunity for you to build upon your dreams, just like all of us, um, actually. Um, and um, so there's that. And then, of course, Pluto, although it doesn't happen until next month, is going to go right back into your sign. And it's going to be there uh, for another uh, month. Months, uh, I believe it was um, in Capricorn for seven months in 2020. It's in Capricorn for seven months in 2023. When we get to 2024, I think it's in Capricorn for three or four months. And then in 2025, it leaves. And goes into Aquarius, and then you're done with Pluto in Capricorn, which has been quite a ride, has it not? Since 2008, so we'll see what we'll see what that's going to be all about. Hard to hard to say, really, for me anyway. I don't know. I hate to I hate to pigeonhole stuff, and and you know, um, it's not like I don't like to commit to an idea, but um, all I know is that change is coming and change is here. And uh, we're going to have to move with it, right? We're moving in that great sea of change. Um, so we're going to do a soul flower plant spirit oracle first to start, and then we'll do the card reading 
and uh, I'll pull out a deck for that. So this is a Oracle deck by a woman, Lisa Estabrook. Estabrook. Uh, it's a beautiful deck, beautiful art, and some really good information. And last month, I used the um, I used the star seeds, and this month, I used the actual earth seeds. <laughs> so we had a big vision in in April, and now we're bringing it down into uh, to plant the seeds of change, right? And what we need to be aware of. So let's see what the soul flower plant oracle has to say. Well, oops. Here we go. Black eyed Susan, recognition. Well, isn't that just what, exactly what you want? Okay. Well, you are a Capricorn. You should want recognition. You work hard enough for it. Well, you work hard enough, period. Okay, let's see. Black eyed Susan. Ready, 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 ready. Okay, here we go. We have these in New York. We have these, and uh, we actually have some that uh, like popped up in our yard. They were beautiful. They haven't seen them for a couple of years. They, um, I think plants have like certain times when the when everything is right for them to come out. Hopefully, we'll see some more black eyed Susans this year. So sometimes it is easier to bury hurt feelings than difficult emotions. Black Eyed Susan gently helps you to wake up and recognize all aspects of yourself, even the ones that you deem ugly or unworthy. Even your deepest, darkest truths need to be shown in the light of love and honored as part of your human experience. Um, it says spirit flows through everything. It is light. It is shadow, masculine and feminine, joy and sorrow, good and bad. It is all of it and more, and we are all of it and more. Black Eyed Susan shines her light of recognition onto those, uh, all those aspects of ourselves that we keep hidden, but that unconsciously inform so much about our day-to-day -day reality, our shadow selves. It is not easy work, but a huge part of our personal and spiritual growth. It is tied up, is tied up in shadow work. After all, how are we to love ourselves fully if we can't love all of ourselves. Bringing the light that has been hidden allows us to recognize and under, to be recognized and understood and honored as an important part of our individual human experience. Shadow work helps us to recognize ingrained behaviors and triggers that are making it hard for us to find peace and joy in our lives. Recognizing them doesn't mean that those aspects are bad. It just means uh, that when the same old feelings and behavioral patterns merge, we are better able to work through them with ease and self-compassion, for we will see them for what they truly are, our shadows. I just want to read one more thing here. It's just hard to hold it up. Black Eyed Seasons remind us that, that there is, reminds us that there is our truth. There is the observer's truth and there is the truth. Uh, that's the thing about life. We really have no control over what happens outside of us. To think that any amount of planning, organizing, or other method of preparation will gain some measure of control is pure illusion. The only thing we truly have any control over is our response to life in general. Not an easy lesson, but critical and releasing victim, victimhood and empowering ourselves to lead fulfilling lives, whatever comes our way. All right. That's the Black Eyed Susan. Now, let's select a, I believe this might be the toss deck. One of my many little uh, bags from Ona. All right. Love the smell of leather. I went to Italy many, many years ago with my girlfriends. And one of my favorite memories of Italy, we were there for five weeks. This was like in the in the early 80s, 83, I think. Some of you may not have been born, but anyway, um, 
and she had a cousin who owned a leather factory and oh my god we went into the leather factory and it was just smelled so amazing i bought a black leather mini skirt that year <laughs> i think i had to give it away i don't think it would me anymore it's a beautiful skirt though oh my god i got italian leather Ooh. leather was so sexy anyway and Add Italian in front of it. I think she, I think Ona uses Italian leather. I think she uses leather that's made for like upholstery leather, so it's really nice and oh, it smells so good. Plus, makes your cards smell good. <laughs> All right, we're using the uh, top deck because you can do it. You can take it. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, good. We're at a truce. This is good. This is a point of peace. A point of balance when kind of everybody's on the same page this can also be a time of rest that you've you've been resting and recuperating this can be a, a time of recuperation but this this card always reminds me of x marks the spot right and the center the center of the of the spot is always your heart it is associated with the planet jupiter it says here jupiter and libra jupiter and libra hmm. all right um What's challenging that? Oh, lust. <laughs> um, so you have some feelings. You have some things rising up, some desires that are rising up just when you thought you had everything like even on even keel. These desires come up. And this could be part of the shadow work that the, the soul cards were talking about, the soul flower cards were talking about. Underneath it all is the princess of swords this is the princess that doesn't abide to lies this is the this is the truth seeker she is swinging her sword to to warn us that there is a truth that perhaps we are not looking at the out of the uh past we have the princess of cups this is um messages it's 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 tenderness uh it's sensitivity it's good good news coming through so in the past, we had some good news in the sky. Ah, we have the Knight of Cups. This is about uh, putting your heart out, wearing your heart on your sleeve to a certain extent. Um, and so one of the things that Capricorn can sometimes have trouble with is being vulnerable. I think that's true of every sign. But Capricorn uh, does not like to seem vulnerable because it, feel, it feels like a weakness. Well, vulnerable is vulnerability is anything but a weakness. It's a strength because you're not afraid to show what's in your heart. Um, and so um, um, put your heart on your sleeve. Of course, you have to be cautious, but that's your nature anyway. Let's see your immediate future. We have the hermit. This is about shining your light. This can also be a feeling that you are hermited away. Perhaps you wanna, you wanna stay hidden uh, for a little while anyway, um, and just have your, have your wisdom be the thing that people see not necessarily you um but but what the light that you shine the light that you shine your um how other people see you they see you as abundant and friendly and loving and people really really like you people really like you. they like me they do you do have some interference uh in your domestic situation so things at home are not uh flowing there can be some fear and there can be a sense of having to be very careful about the, the actions that you take um, because there are people who don't maybe even have your best intentions at heart or are looking to sort of cut you down a little bit. Um, you are hopes and fears, the queen of cups. Um, I don't think anybody fears the beautiful mothering energy of the queen of cups. Um, this is about also the queen of cups is about your ability to see things psychically or intuitively and maybe some of the things that you're seeing are scaring you uh or maybe some of the things you're seeing aren't and you're like wow that's great can that really happen yes it can really happen we have the devil card at the end so it's interesting because this is the capricorn card um this is about um mm -hmm. understanding that uh we can be successful on the physical plane but we have to definitely not have that be the primary um, indication as to whether we're a successful person. Money does not make you successful. Uh, success doesn't necessarily make you successful. What makes you successful is knowing that 
there's something greater than you, that there is a higher power and staying connected to that higher power and becoming a conduit for the manifestation of that higher power is really the way to have the best of both worlds. Underneath it, we have completion. So there's a cycle completing here. This says Venus and Aries, but um, we do have Jupiter moving out of Aries. So this can be a completion of that cycle. We do have some sorrow here and we do have some disappointment. And what I would say about these three cards underneath it all is that your sorrow and your disappointment are done. That part is done. Is done. All right. That's what I see, guys. I hope you find that helpful. Like and subscribe if you would. If you're interested in having a reading with me, I do hour and 90 minute, so 60 minute readings, 90 minute readings. I try to keep them um, relatively um, um, relatively affordable. I do realize that it's a commitment. And, I, and for those of you who have uh, decided to get a reading, thank you. It's been great getting to know everybody. It really has. I'm amazed at just what a wonderful group of people uh, we've been able to attract here on YouTube. Um, if uh, you want to uh, be a patron, there's a link below. I do have a Patreon page. It's not fantastic yet. I'm still working on it. I'm still trying to figure out how to do all this and uh, see clients and uh, renovate my house. <laughs> And get my feet out, and get my feet under me after many, many years of uh, being a caretaker for my mother. Um, all right, what else do I want to say? I think that's it. Have a wonderful month. I'll see you again next month for the tarot scopes for June. Um, it's okay to be vulnerable. Um, it's time for healing for you. And uh, allow it to uh, allow it to happen, and don't whatever you do, don't uh, disconnect from the source of all things, uh, because it will work in your favor. <laughs> all right, guys, take care. Have a wonderful month, and I'll see you again next month. Namaste.